Climate change impacts are already felt globally because of rising temperatures, with Asia being one of the most vulnerable. In the region, transport emissions are expected to increase another 48% between 2015 and 2050 if policies don't change. That is why the Council for Decarbonizing Transport in Asia has come together to plan the transformation of transport and promote a goal of zero carbon transport in Asia by mid-century. This is the path to zero carbon transport. We are far, uh, quite far actually, uh, from where we want to achieve in terms of net zero by 2050. With, with passenger transport, it has moved a bit faster than other sectors. Uh, for freight, net zero just started, especially for intercity uh, long distance freight. With growing vehicle ownership, ASEAN, ASEAN cities are in the forefront of facing a number of challenges such as air pollution, traffic congestion, road accidents, and fatalities. Several countries in Asia have already committed to an economy-wide decarbonization target, but there is still lack of long-term strategies and clear action plans. So I think one of the primary issues that is holding us back is the lack of awareness and, and the lack of collective consciousness. The governments in Asia are largely focused uh, to economic and social development. The environmental concerns are now seen as big issue, but concrete policy measures are still scanty. We have you know, somehow not put a lot of focus on freight or water transport when it comes to electrification or decarbonization. To me, one of the blind spots is the fact that we don't recognize the diversity at the table when we're making policies. We need to include things like safety, because lack of safety, especially for women, for example, is something that prevents them from actually trying to get out of motorized mode. At the grassroots level, at the citizen level, I think there is obviously this overarching feeling that uh, I alone cannot do much. You know, what can I do if I change myself? As a community, how do we revision our cities? How do we revision transport? It will be the planning of uh, important hubs. The railways in Asian countries, except a few one, is in shambles. So that is required, you know, because for the transfer of the traffic from the road to rail is important. It's on the policy to discourage using of fossil fuel. Electrification is one of these solutions. Linkages between all of them need to be understood and they need to made, be made evident to communities and to people so that people also feel that, you know, they are playing a role in finding the solution. Young people are a great um, voice in this, you know, they are talking about it. They are saying this is our future that's been taken away from us. With all of this in mind, our vision for an efficient and prosperous transport system by mid-century can be achieved. Imagine a safer and healthier Asia, with fewer and only clean vehicles on the roads and more freight being transported sustainably. We must act now.